Jesse Rich Ministries, called by God to take the word of faith to New York City, America, and all the world. Today, God's people desperately need to be taught who they are in Christ Jesus, how to be led by the Holy Spirit, and walk in the God kind of love so they can live in victory in every area of their life. Stay tuned to today's dynamic message as Brother Rich ministers the word of faith. Hey, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Jesse Rich. So honored and delighted you tuned in today. Let's turn our Bibles over to Ephesians chapter 6. Now, we've been taking time every day to lay a faith foundation in God's Word. And I want to encourage you every day, read scriptures as you read through the Word of God. Mark promises that belong to you. I start out with like Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to rich glory by Christ Jesus. And I begin to memorize that verse. And not only that, but I just keep saying it to myself over and over again. Then I got like scripture, like Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ, strengthen me. So now I've got two verses of scripture I can use to help me out personally. And then I just begin to grow and develop in more verses of scripture. I got scripture like 3 John, verse 2, where the scripture says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Is the soul prosper? Well, now I got scripture for finances. Got 1 Peter 2, 24. I mean, one night I was just in this church service, and the pastor was preaching, it was like Wednesday night, and I, re I don't remember what he's preaching on, but he said, well, like, he just referred to it. He said, well, like 1 Peter 2, 24 said, by his stripes you were healed. Well, I never heard that before. And so I got somebody to help me, and I found that scripture in the Bible, and I highlighted it, and then I memorized it. And every day I just kept saying it to myself. I did today. And I just kept saying, who his own self, bear, I'd quote the whole verse, who his own self bear our sins, his own body in the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unrighteous by whose stripes you were healed. Now thank God for attending church because you want to go and fellowship with the saints. and Most of all, you want to be fed on God's word. But not only that, you need, need to attend to the word every day. Now many dear people, you know, they don't go to church, but they don't spend any time in God's word. And many dear people, on the other hand, go to church but they never spend any time in God's Word to build himself up. And you're going to want to do that. You're going to want to build yourself up every day. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's like exercising. It's, kind of, it's easy to eat. But then it takes some restraint to put some exercise in. Well, if we're going to develop physically and develop our muscles and our body, then we'd have to exercise. Well, spiritually speaking, when we hear the Word of God, it helps feed our spirit man on God's Word. Remember Romans 10, 17? Said, so then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, As newborn babes desire the sincere mark words you may grow thereby. Well, God wants us to grow. And then in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus said, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word proceed out of the mouth of God. So I'd take Matthew 4, verse 4, and then 1 Peter 2, 2, the one I just quoted before it. And then I'd link those verses together and see that, well, God wants me to grow and develop spiritually. And he wants all of us to become strong. Now here in Ephesians, let's go over here to Ephesians chapter 6. Now the scripture says here in verse 10, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye or you may be able to stand uh, against the wiles of the devil. Now know this, this is going to be you doing this. This isn't going to be anybody else doing it for you. Now thank God for intercessory prayer. But you want to take the time to feed on God's word every day so your spirit man will be strong. And you want to get yourself built up in God's word. So it goes on and says in verse 12 of Vision 6, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to, uh, to withstand evil day, and having known all stand, stand therefore. Now notice who's going to be doing the standing. Who's going to be doing the resisting? It's going to be each one of us individually. And see, people don't know that as Christians. And been maybe born again or saved for years and had no idea that there's something they need to do. We need to get in the Word. There's nothing more important than you do. There's, there's no greater investment that you can make in your life than putting time in God's Word every day and putting time in prayer. Building up your spirit, man. Remember Jude, verse 20 said, But you, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, we need to be praying. We need to be praying the Holy Ghost. There's different kinds of prayer. These scriptures are going to let us know in just a moment. So this verse 14 of Ephesians 6 says here, 
Stand therefore, having your loins about truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod the preparation of gospel peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be quenched all the fire darts wicked. And take the helm of salvation, sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Now verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Paul writing this, he went on to say, and for me. In other words, he wanted people to pray for him. Now what for? That others may be given me, that open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Well, now, there's different kinds of prayer. We know this from this verse 18. Because he said here, praying always with all prayer. If there was just one kind of praying, or one kind of prayer, then he'd just say always pray. And we'd always be praying. But there's different kinds of prayer. There's the prayer of intercession, where you're interceding for somebody else. There's the prayer of faith, like James chapter 1 talks about, and James chapter 5, and Mark eleven twenty four. 24. And then there's like the prayer of agreement. It's kind of like the prayer of faith. You're getting somebody to agree with you in prayer about something, or more than one person. But once you pray that prayer of agreement, like you and Connie get together, or you and Bill get together, or you and your pastor, or church, whatever, you, and you're, go, you're going to pray. There may be two people in the room, maybe 15 people in the room. I mean, there could be 100 people in the room. And you're going to pray this prayer of agreement. Like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, Again, I send you, if two of you shall agree on earth, as touch anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them, my Father, which is in heaven. And like Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four, Therefore I send you what things there are when you pray. Believe you receive them, you shall have them. Well, now, if you're going to pray this prayer of agreement or have somebody pray the prayer of agreement with you, open up your Bible, find those scriptures that you're going to pray about or that you're going to use in prayer. Again, like Mark, like Mark chapter 11, verse 24, you could just do that yourself. Or if you want someone to agree with you in prayer, you could take Matthew 18, verse 19. And so you're going to pray. You're uh, praying that you'll have the money for your car to get fixed. So you call one of your friends up or you're at church or whatever and say, I want you to agree with me in prayer. Now, what Jesus said, he said, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. And sometimes you'll just say to someone, well, now just agree with me about that. Well, that's not what he said. That's just part of what he said. You know, and sometimes people say, oh, yeah, I'm in agreement with you. Well, thank God you're in agreement. But you need to ask. So Jesus said, Again, I say to you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them, my Father, which said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, they're in the midst of them. Verse 20 of Matthew 18. Well, now the more people you get involved in this, the more you kind of may, may muddy up the water. Because with this prayer of agreement, it's a lot like the prayer of faith. You've got to believe it's done when you pray. So let's say like you and I pray this prayer right now in Jesus' name, and we agree that you have the money for your car to get fixed. So we pray this prayer, Father, we'd come to you. And I pray, Lord, for my dear friend here in Jesus' name. Lord, they, they have a need. They need money for their car to get fixed and this bill to be paid and taken care of. And you said, again, I send you, if two of you shall agree on earth as touch anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them, Father, which is heaven. So we ask you, Lord, we claim this money in Jesus' name. This car is taken care of in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so you say amen to this. You know, you're saying, hey, I'm agreeing with you, Brother Rich. Uh, with that prayer you prayed, that's exactly what I needed. Then, you know, uh, you get off the phone with me. Or you leave my presence. And then you call up sister whoever. Say, well, I want you to know Brother Rich and I just prayed and agree, but I want you to agree with us. Now, what are you doing that for? You've already prayed and believed you've got it in Jesus' name. I mean, if you didn't have any confidence with me when I prayed with you, then find someone before you pray that's going to agree with you in prayer. But the thing is, when you pray, you believe it's done in Jesus' name. Now, people don't like this. They keep wanting to pray the same prayer and over and over and over again. And you'll hear ministers say that, you know. Sometimes they'll get upset if people preach the faith message. They'll say, well, you know, now, I, now there's one thing I disagree about those faith preachers. They teach that you're just supposed to ask for it one time. But I believe you should keep on asking. They'll quote, you know, maybe from Matthew 11 or Matthew 18 about the unjust judge. And they'll think, well, now, I believe you should keep on asking. Well, what would you do with salvation if you had someone like that? You know, you, you've got some guy that, or lady that wants to be born again, wants to be saved. How many times would you pray the sinner's prayer with them for them to get saved? Maybe every day, 
maybe several times today, oh God, save me. I believe Jesus, my Lord and Savior, ask me to come to my heart. Jesus, save me from all my sins. I believe you're Lord. I confess you, my Lord. And then do this again, then do it again, then do it again, then do it. How many times would you want to pray that salvation? Because you see, you don't realize this, but if you don't do it in faith, it can be sin. Anything that's not of faith, the scripture said in Romans 14, verse 23, is sin. So sometimes people keep vain, praying vain repetitions because they don't believe God heard them when they prayed. And God's going to require for you as a believer. Now, those people in Luke 11, and, you know, Luke 18, or excuse me, Matthew, yeah, Luke, I got it right. Luke chapter 11 and Luke chapter 18 about the unjust judge and the man that came to the man at midnight, you know, because he had friends came and needed food. Well, you now see, now you got to realize, first of all, they weren't born again. And that's not being taught that way in the New Testament. Now, I'm not saying, you know, God didn't answer pre people's prayers because they kept on asking, asking, asking. But as you grow and develop spiritually, you're going to learn to cooperate with God's Word. Go with the Word. And when you pray this prayer of faith, you pray this prayer of agreement, before you go into it, just say, now, am I going to believe that I receive it when I pray? I mean, I had this Bible study I did for a few years, maybe three or four or less. And every week I did it, unless I had to preach someone else. And so I'm teaching them the faith message over every week. See, I think it was on Thursday night. Well, one night I came in, I brought this test. And I had like, I don't know, maybe 20 questions on this piece of paper. I had it copied off and passed it out there. I told them to put the date on there and name it, or their name on there. And uh, you could use your Bible if you wanted to. And these are the questions. Here they are. Boy, now, the, most of them were pretty shocked about this. They didn't mind coming to Bible study, but they weren't expecting a test. But you can stop and think about it. Is everything you believe in God's Word going to be tested by Satan? So uh, one of the questions was, was Mark eleven twenty four. 24. I said, the question was, what did Jesus say that you'd get in verse 24? I don't know. There may be 30, 35 people in that Bible study. Maybe not every week, but there was a, you know, a nice turnout. Maybe not that many. But anyway, you understand. So, uh, do you know, not one person got that question right. And yet they'd heard me, at least in that Bible study, for three or four years teach on it. Plus, they listened to my radio program. Plus, they came to other meetings they came to. Maybe not every single one of them, but they'd, they've heard some word. They've heard Mark 11, 23 and 24 for a long time. Heard them many times. And not one of them got it right. Now, they just assumed that they knew what that verse said. Some of them had it memorized. And that's good. We should memorize the word. You, you want to be a quote? Jesus had it memorized. He's able to quote in Matthew 4 and Luke 4 what the written word said to Satan and back Satan down, cause Satan to leave. So I said, now what did Jesus say you'd get? Now most people said he, he said you'd get your desires or you'd get what you pray for. But that's not what Jesus said. See, we, we think we know verses and that can be dangerous to us. Now, every verse of scripture that we've got memorized, there's still revelation knowledge in that verse that we don't know about yet. Like John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have lasting life. Well, just because you and I could quote that, doesn't necessarily mean that we know that's all that's in it. Well, I mean, we never know what's all, in this life, we'll never know what's all in every verse of scripture. Even though we've heard it for years, even though we've quoted it, even though we can quote it, even though we've got it memorized, even though we think we know it from front to cover. No, we want to stay teachable, don't we? Well, now, some people put down that Jesus said you get your desires. Some people put down you'd get what you prayed for. Some people put down you get all the things you asked for in prayer. But Jesus said now, now listen to what he said, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Follow on. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Well, now these people thought they knew this. See, they, oh, I know Mark eleven twenty four. 24. And see, I knew this was going on. So I got to show it to them that they don't know. That's my job as a minister, as a teacher, you know, bring them back into reality here. They're not going to like it, but you know they'll get over it if their heart's right. See, part of the job as a ministry is reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering. You know, a lot of times people don't want to be rebuked. I've had the Lord deal with me and say, now you got to tell them whatever I did, go tell them. Now, if their heart's right, son, They'll come back. But if their heart's not right and they don't want to submit, then they won't come back. Well, you know, he'd let me know ahead of time. Now, you go ahead and tell them. They're not going to come back. But you go ahead and tell them anyway. 
Well, now people don't like to be corrected, but the Lord chastises us with His Word, doesn't He? And part of the, again, part of the, the part of the ministry that you have to do as a minister <clears throat> is not only preach the Word in season out, but you also have to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Well, now, they're not going to like this, but still it's important that I do my job as a, as a minister of the gospel. See, these people are off. They need to be corrected. Now, they, if you'd have told them this, they'd have, if you'd have gave them the answer up front, they'd have said, oh, yeah, I knew that. So I had them turn their papers in, you know, and let them know this is, this, this is where you messed up on this. They missed the other questions, too. But you think this is real simple. And you see people think, oh, I know about prayer. Do you? I mean, I thought I knew some about prayer when I got born again, filled the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And a guy came up to me one day at the airport and said, Jesse, do you know how to pray? Now, he insulted me. He offended me when he said that. I got upset. I didn't say anything. But, you know, you'll, you'll try to hide it. And he proceeded to read from me from John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. Now, up until this time, I'd pray to God and I'd pray to Jesus and I'd pray to the Holy Spirit and then start all over. I'm, I'm trying to get some help here. Well, now, God knows that. So he gave me his word. And this guy comes up to me and reads from his Bible, John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. He said, Jesus said, in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily I say to you, what you shall ask the Father my name, who will give it to you. Hitherto, hitherto means up until now, hitherto you've asked nothing in my name, ask, and you shall receive that you join me before. So this man went ahead and told me, you know, Jesse, he said, now up until now I prayed to God, prayed to Jesus, prayed to the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know you're supposed to pray to God in Jesus' name. Well, I didn't either. But see, my pride and religious upbringing rose up in my flesh. And I'm not going to, you know, my attitude is, well, now God doesn't care how you pray, just as long as you pray. You ever think that way? But see, that's not a verse. The Bible doesn't say God doesn't care how you pray, just as long as you pray. That's religious teaching. See, that sounds good in church. Sounds good about church. But that's not the word. See, God will give you his word and he'll see what you'll do with it. Fools, because their iniquities are afflicted, they draw near in the gates of death. Then they cry in their Lord in distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered their instructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, wonderful works, children of men, and let them sacrifice, sacrifice thanksgiving, and declare his works with rejoicing. And when you read there, that's Psalm 107, beginning verse 7 through 20. You'll see that these people got close to death. They almost died. And then what happened to them? God sent his word. Now, if they'll receive what he sent, they can get healed. Now, think about this. Now, they're almost dead. They're at death's door. My mom would say they're at, they're at death's door. The Bible says that at the gates of death. What do you mean? They're almost ready to die. Could die tonight. You know, if you, you visit people before, maybe in a hospital or in a hospice center, and you knew, boy, doesn't look like they're going to make it through tonight. But. You know, you may know in your spirit, go ahead and minister to him anyway. I want a man like that who was breathing every once in a while and laid hands on him. And I was in Bible school. Some people asked me to go visit him. And he was in the hospital underneath the oxygen tent. I laid, put my hand underneath that and prayed for him. I mean, if you looked at him, there's no way in the world he's going to get out of his bed. He's been in seven. He's never been saved. Lived across the street from a church. First, it was a Nazarene church that owned the building. He lived across the... And I think he was born in that house. And grew up, and so now he's like 77 years old. And in those, all those years, they told me, the church told me, he'd never been to church. The Nazarene people that believed in the new birth said to the, new, the people that bought the church from them, which is Pentecostal people, said, now, we've tried to get Mr. So-and-so saved. In all the years we've had the church across the street, he's never came. He'd watch summertime. He'd sit on the porch and watch us go to church. So the Pentecostal people that bought the church, they worked on him. Never got him come on time. Well, the ministers were out of town, and they called me up. I was in Bible school, and I just came back to my hometown to visit for a few days. One of the breaks, like spring break or something. And they said, would you go visit him in the hospital? They, they don't expect him to live through the night. Boy, I went and saw him. He ain't going, you know, in the natural, I'm thinking he ain't going to live through the night. I've seen, you know... When I was in the hospital as a teenager, five guys died in the bed next to me. And you kind of learn after a while. You can tell, yeah, this, ain't one, this one ain't going to make it through the night. You know, I'd ask the nurse, do you think this person's going to make it through the night? No. Well, so I put my hand in that tent, or that oxygen tent, and, 
laid hands on him, prayed for him. And I saw, I knew about the Spirit of God in my spirit. This guy's leaving this hospital healed and whole. And he's going to get saved. Well, I, you know, I left. And if you went by the natural, see, it looks like you're totally wrong. Because he's breathing like every once in a while. He, and then he quit. They think, well, that's it. And then he exhaled. But another guy I once seen in the hospital, he was like in his 40s, real sharp looking guy. And he'd had a heart attack. He was in the emergency room. The same church asked me to go visit him. And when I walked into his room, I knew by the Spirit of God in my heart, he ain't leaving this hospital. He's dead. So I started talking about Jesus and see if he'd get him to receive him as Lord and Savior. He blew me off, told me he was nice. I came and visited him, appreciated the church, send me out here. And, uh, you know, thanks for coming by, but I'm okay. And he kept cutting me off and interrupting me. Well, I left. I felt so dejected. I thought, oh, he's going to die and go to hell. Because I knew in my spirit this guy's not getting healed. Now, he looked okay. You know, he's just a little bit light-colored skin. You know, he was, he'd been a dark-skinned person. You know, like Italian-looking, you know. And, uh, but it looked like, you know, it was kind of pale, pasty-looking. But, you know, you do, that's probably going to come back. Well, then a few days later, I went back to see him. Before I went back to Bible school. He's setting up in bed. Now he's got a room he's in. They're getting ready to dismiss him from the hospital. He's waiting for his wife to bring his clothes. And when I went in his room, there was like two, there was three nurses' room. A couple of them were sitting on his bed. He's a real ladies' man. And they're all in there, you know, having a good time, having a little party, f flirting with one another. And he tells me, preach is good. You stop by and see me. I'm okay. And they looked real sharp. All his color came back. But I looked at him. By the Spirit of God, I knew in my heart, he, he's not leaving this hospital. He's dead. So I said, Mr. So-and-so, now, such and such church sent me by to see you. And they wanted me to come by and tell you about Jesus. Tell you about if you know the Lord. Oh, he says, I got that all taken care of. He cut him off. Now, he said, I appreciate what you're doing. You know, a young man like you in Bible school and going to go into ministry. Now, you know such and such business in this town? I knew about it. And he said, now, when you get out of school, you stop by and I'll have the bookkeeper, the secretary, cut you a check. I believe in what you're doing. And by that time, the doctor's walking by in the hallway. He's going to go to the office there to sign the papers, release this man. He yells to the doctor, hey, doc, you, you going to sign my papers? He's real loud. You know, doctor nodded his head, yes, that he was. So he, you know, I said, now, Mr. So-and-so, you know, you ne we never know when we'd go, die. And we want to make sure Jesus in our heart. Now, I know all about that son. You got that all taken care of. Now, that's not for me. You just go take that to somebody else. Well, those nurses had got up, and they left the room as soon as I walked in. They didn't want to hear anything about it, you know. Well, I tried. I walked out of that hospital room, and I walked down that hallway, and I got that elevator, and I'm getting ready to go out and get in my van and drive all the way back to Bible school, several hundred miles away. And I felt so dejected. I thought, oh, if I'd have prayed more, if I'd have fasted more, if I knew the Bible better. I've been more anointed. Maybe I could have got the guy saved. So I'm taking it personal. Well, I drove all the way back to Bible school. And that church called me. And said, now, Brother Rich, I want to tell you something. You know that man who was 77 years old? You know God healed him after you went and prayed for him? He came to, came to our church Sunday and got born again. Never been to church in 77 years, according to them. According to what he said. But that dear man... Mr. So-and-so, you went and saw him. They said the nurses called the hospital or called the uh, church office. Said there was a young fellow came here from your church to minister to Mr. So-and-so. And that Bible school student walked out of his room, walked down the hallway. No sooner got on the elevator than Mr. So-and-so dropped over dead with a massive heart attack. They did code blue on him, you know, get all the doctors to come try to revive him. Couldn't revive him. We just want you to the church to know we appreciate you sending someone to minister to him. Well, now you see now, one, if you went by what you saw in the natural, you ain't going to come out. The other one, he looked okay, you know, looked like he's just going through a little problem, but he'd be okay. Well, the 77-year-old man, he didn't look like no way in the world is going to come out of here. The other guy, you know, he's in his 40s, looks like the doctor's going to be able to help him. He's going to be able to come out. But yet in my spirit, I knew the 77-year-old man, He's going to get saved. He's going to get healed and get saved. This man ain't leaving the hospital. This other man in his 40s. And God was right on both of them. 
But I tried to minister to him anyway. Tried to give him the word. But see, he knew so much. And see, so he dropped over dead. See, he's in hell now. Like the rich man died in hell and lifted up his eyes, seeing Abraham afar off in Lazarus' bosom. You don't want to go to hell. And all of us are just one breath, one heartbeat away from eternity. We're not going to live forever. No matter how long. We live to be 120 years old. We're not living. That's nothing compared to eternity. You have Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. So you're not a Christian. You're not born again because you go to church or because you're a church member. See, that was a shock to me to find that out. Or because you believe in the Bible or because you believe in God or because you've taken communion or because you've kept the commandments or because or you think you have or because you, know, you believe in Jesus or because you pray to Mary or whoever. See, good, good, you if you're having communion, good to you, you know, you go to church. But see, water baptism doesn't recreate in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. And these verses shocked me when someone told me about them. Because I went to church. So thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in the heart God has raised him dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believeth the righteous, and with the mouth confession made on salvation. Verse 13 of Romans 10 says, if you confess me before me, Jesus said in Matthew 10, 10, 10, 32, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. Who's, verse 13 now of Romans 10, whosoever called upon him, Lord, shall be saved. Have you done that? Have you called upon the Lord? Have you asked Jesus in your heart? That's the most important thing you can do in life. See, thank God for going to church, but it doesn't save you. You're going to have to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Now, if you like like was, when I first heard that, I didn't like that. That offended me. But I knew this people's right. The Holy Ghost will work on your heart to receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior. If you'd like to pray a prayer, call our ministry. Or just right there where you're at, ask Jesus to come to your heart. Confess your mouth and believe your heart. Jesus has been raised to death. Again, Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. Enjoy meeting with you. Till next time, it's Pastor Jesse Rich remind you, receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior. And remember, His glory. He's glory to God, the Father, because He's Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining the broadcast of Word of Faith, the outreach ministry and teachings of Jesse Rich. If you'd like for Brother Rich to agree with you in prayer or to receive a copy of today's program or additional teaching materials, contact Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237-170, New York, New York, 10023. Visit our website at www.jesserichministries.com.